scheming bloodshed and dragons on Game of Thrones, you could actually pick up some pretty valuable tips on how to manage your money, we're told. Now, Tim Guest, Managing Director of Infinite Wealth, joins me now from Perth with the top five financial lessons that you can pick up watching the show. Tim, thank you very much for being with us. Um, look, didn't expect this, didn't expect there to be a real cut through here, but what are the top five tips uh, in terms of uh, handling your wealth that you can learn from Game of Thrones? Uh, well, look, Chris, uh, firstly, very excited about the new series coming out next uh, yeah. next week. I've been going back and binge-watching all the past seasons, and obviously with what I do, travelling around Australia, educating people about money, I started to think about, you know, what are the lessons that we can take away from Game of Thrones when it comes to money? So the top five lessons we can take away. Firstly, the one that you talked about before, always pay your debts. Secondly, changing allegiances can definitely pay off. Thirdly, you don't want to spend like a king. Uh, fourth, we don't want to let setbacks stop us from moving forward and of course we always want to make sure that we're preparing for the worst as well absolutely tim yeah i've been uh, trying to to re-watch a lot but uh, i'm basically just getting myself all revved up now love those uh those points there very interesting wanted to get stuck into the first one with you this is a lannister thing always pay your debts why is that so important well, I mean, look at the Lannisters for a start, right? You know, probably in the most hated, hated family in the series. You know, their history is checkered with greed, with uh, a murder, with betrayal and even incest, yet they've got a stellar reputation for always paying their debts. It's essentially, it's like a credit score that follows them around. And that's allowed them to become probably the wealthiest family uh, in all of the series. So, you know, if you make sure that you pay your debts, you're going to have really good credit history. And of course, if you're going to build your wealth, you want to run an empire, then your ability to access credit and cheap credit is very important, so make sure you pay your debts. I don't pay your debts, okay, good point. Now, um, changing allegiances, this is something we see tons of in the show. Uh, I think uh, I'm not wrong in saying that Australians are much more loyal when it comes to their financial <laughs> institutions and things like that. We do tend to be pretty loyal, but, uh, I mean, look, right, right, right where I'm up to at the moment, uh, uh, my favourite character, Tyrion Lannister, has switched sides. He's now joined Daenerys, the, you know, mother of dragons, breaker of chains, unbro you know, the, the list goes on with it. We're here all night, Tim. And this is <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. So and this has really paid off for him. So, you know, I guess the lesson here is that just because you've done things a certain way, you know, most of your life, it doesn't mean it's the best way. So, you know, this can really, I guess, come up when it comes to things like savings accounts. Uh, you might find that, you know, you can find a fee-free bank account with a different bank. Maybe you can get better interest rates on your savings, you know, with your home loans. Uh, certain banks will allow you to borrow more, so maybe you're better off with a different bank that will allow you to borrow more, and, of course, you can access cheaper rates. I mean, if we're talking about superannuation, I mean, we know with the Banking Royal Commission, the exorbitant amount of fees that these companies are making from managing our super, you know, and yet 90% of fund managers don't meet, beat the market. So maybe you're better off with an ultra low cost index fund where you're going to get the market returns, but you're going to save heaps on your costs. And also, you know, with superannuation, normally you're in the default fund, which is something like a balanced fund. Uh, depending on your stage of life and your circumstances, that might not be the best for you. Maybe you'd be better off in a high growth fund. So changing allegiances, allegiances can definitely have its benefits. Do you actually have to change or can you just threaten to change? Do you have uh, power if you, uh, if you just sort of ring up a lender and say, do better for me? Yeah, look, certainly you can. I mean, uh, you know, one of the good ideas is always it's always a good start to go back to your original bank and say, you know, or, or your insurance company if you've got things like car insurance and, and maybe look at leaving. There may be often some special offers that they're willing to give you not to lose. But at the same time, a lot of these institutions seem to be way more focused on attracting new clients. So you may often find that switching is going to be far better. And look, you know, sometimes there's paperwork and things like that to take care of. But, you know, if it's going to save you thousands and thousands of dollars, then you know, it's really worth it. Yeah, Tim, your third point was uh, was don't spend like a king. Now, how significant a problem can it be if you do overindulge uh, with your money? Yes, yeah, certainly. Well, look, we, we, we start off in the Game of Thrones universe, so to speak, with uh, King Robert, you know, and King Robert's very well known for, you know, indulging. He's uh, got a great reputation as a womanizer and a drinker and, you know, ultimately that indul indulgence ends up killing him. You know, he goes out hunting after drinking too much and he ends up dead. And this really, I guess, fits in line with some new research that have just come out that shows that 35% of Australians uh, feel pressured to keep up appearances and maintain a certain level of lifestyle. And this is often 
them coming at the cost of their financial goals and sometimes even their, their health and their well, well-being. Now, probably the most alarming statistic from this is that when you drop, and that, that, that survey was done across all, all sorts of different age groups, when you actually drop the age group to 30 and under, the stats increased to 50%. You know, so 50% of Australians feeling pressured to maintain that level of lifestyle, you know, go out and spend and look good and, you know, with our social media world, and it's really kind of holding us back from a financial perspective. So that's not a smart idea. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely understand the the pressure there. Social media is a big one, isn't it, Tim? Now, look, uh, another one was don't let setbacks stop you. You've got to bounce back. We see a lot of this in Game of Thrones, the comeback kid there, whether it's Daenerys or whoever. Um, How important is this when it comes to our finances too? Well, look, pro- probably the uh, the fan favourite Daenerys, you know, who we were talking about just before. I mean, you know, she's never let her circumstances get in her way. I mean, let's kind of go back and look at it. Firstly, she was sold off as a, as a bride. Then the love of her life, her soulmate was killed. Not only did he die, but also her baby died. You know, so she's constantly coming up against all sorts of setbacks, and yet it hasn't held her back at all. Now, probably the most important to t- thing to take away from this is how she goes about it. So firstly, she's always out to... To seek advice. You know, she's someone who's a hard worker. She's playing the long game. But not only that, and I think it's something that's really important as well, that she operates very honourably. She operates with a lot of ethics. And, you know, playing that long game rather than thinking about the short-term gains is often what will have you end up better. I mean, another example is, is also Peter Baelish, Littlefinger. You know, I mean, is someone who, not born into wealth and power, yet by playing the long game has managed to, you know, accumulate quite a lot of wealth and power, although maybe he's not exactly the best example because in the the last season, uh, spoiler alert, in the last season, uh, you know, he's killed off by Sansa and Arya. Yeah, you're right, though, but he does say that chaos is a ladder and sometimes it feels like the financial system is pretty chaotic, so that's good to know. Uh, just finally, I, I Tim... It, it, yeah. It's spot on. Yeah, yeah. Now, just finally, prepare for the worst. Uh, now, look, this is a lot of what happens in Game of Thrones is the worst-case <laughs> scenarios. <laughs> what about uh, what about buffers and, and having make sure that we're, uh, we're not in a really difficult financial situation yeah i mean look you know the the catchphrase of the series is winter is coming right you know and it doesn't (laughs) matter who you are you might be the fan favorite i mean look at ned stark in the first series could be the fan favorite you never know when you're going to get killed off right so i think really good lesson here that you've always got to be preparing for the worst you know so things like uh you know making sure you've got an emergency savings fund for when those things really do go wrong and you're going to need to access quick cash very very quickly i think that's very important insurances this is something that a lot of people really fail to take care uh, take care of and uh, i mean if you think about, you know, someone taking out a mortgage possibly with their husband, wife, you know, girlfriend, whoever it is, you know, chances are your your ability to pay that mortgage is based on you both earning an income. So, you know, if there's illness or if there's a job loss or worst case scenario, just like Game of Thrones, there's a death, you know, you, you may not be able to do that. You could learn, you could lose something that you've worked, you know, many, many years to, to be able to acquire. At the same time, when it comes to investing, and I think it's probably one of the biggest mistakes that I see investors make, um, you know, they, they fail to build in the right kind of buffers or safety nets in their investment strategy. If you take property investment for for an example that, you know, people very rarely ever build in, you know, changes to interest rates or unexpected vacancies or what about if the rents drop? What about if we move in, you know, into the different phases of the economic cycle? You know, where things tighten up and you need that little bit extra cash flow. If you haven't built in a safety net or a buffer, then you, you could get wiped out.